Hello everyone, it's been a while since my last video. It's actually been a couple months, and for the last month I haven't really done much with my app either. I started working on this tutorial yesterday, I got some work done into it. I updated the app to use the stable version of Taru, and uh, that required some editing of the files. And I also got a, an example of the FS API. And now I'm going to show you a demo of two things. So this is being asked for. So the first one would be how to use the FS API. This was recent and the, la the next would, would be, one would be how to use commands in Rust. So how do I call a Rust function from the front end? So we're going to do two because, do both of them because of the limitation with Tari's front end APIs well, due to security reasons, by the way. Now, what you want to do after you have the template, which has everything updated, is you want to look at your Tari configuration. Basically, since I updated it, you have to remove some of the things. If you're using VS Code, it'll show you which ones to remove. Don't forget to remove uh, trailing, trailing commas. That's an error in JSON for some reason. But anyways, <clears throat> over here, we have to go down to FS. And if you know the, where the file will be, and it'll be something you're always accessing, you'll have to use a scope and say, you wanna access files in the app directory or the download directory. This is one way to do things. Now, this is the allow list. So usually after you're done making your app, you want to shorten it so that you want all to be false. So you'd remove this and you'd wanna specify which APIs you're using and which of those APIs or which functions are using, or that's how, that's what they want you to do. But you know, when it comes to security, there's a lot of what to do and what not to do versus why you shouldn't do stuff. And I'm not the person who is saying these things, so I'm not gonna explain it either. But the tower people can explain the security reasons behind it more in depth. Most people don't. Like even CSP wasn't explained properly to me. And it wasn't, they I had issues with that as well, getting that first tutorial out, remember? But anyways, after you've done this, you want to go to my example view, which is going to show you how to use it. Okay, so we're here in the example view, and this is what it'll show. What do we, we want to use the FS API? So there's two ways to do it. Before I did tell my users to use window.underscore.tarry.fs, but the problem with this is that it's not an import. So obviously that's the that's not a good way to do it. Rather, you'd want to import what you want to use. And we're going to show you how to use write text file and, and we need a base directory for that because of that security thing. Now, if you look at the APIs or the reference guide, you'll see that all of that information that I just said is here. And you'll notice this one thing. If you need to access arbitrary file system paths, you must write such logic on the core layer instead. It's really, it's filled with jargon like core layer, nobody knows what that means except for them. So I created an issue for them and you know, they'll answer that in the future, but I kind of understood that it means to do it in Rust or that's what I inferred or I, that's what I inferred even though it should have stated that explicitly. And what do we want to do here? You can see the functions here and the most complicated is gonna be the right text file or the right binary file. And how that works is that you basically just say the string you want to write. So over here, we have a function that'll be called an async function that'll be called when the button is clicked. I actually had trouble remembering how to do, how to code in React yesterday because I hadn't done it in a month. But anyways, you want to create file will be called and we get the download directory, which is not important for writing the file, but for we want to, let's say, after we write a file, we want to open it in the Explorer. So that's why I have that. And that API is called, these APIs are called path and shell, which you can use. And then we actually write the text file. So we're going to create a file called example file.txt. And we can see here, okay, let me actually open a new one. I was testing OBS yesterday, so I couldn't make this video yesterday, which is a good thing because I expanded the tutorial today. And uh, yeah, it's all washed out in OBS. But anyways, our downloads folder has nothing here. As you can see, I was experimenting with LUTs as well. And here we go. So write a file and oh, put it in the downloads directory. The, the path is relative to the base directory, by the way. And then we just open the Explorer. 
So let's show you a demo. And there you go, it's that fast. In the future, hopefully they'll add the Electron version where you can open the Explorer on a certain file. I have it, I've done that in Python, but I'm not gonna be wasting time on such a small feature just for a tutorial. So I'm not gonna do that. And it's not that relevant because it's only Linux, which is the problem. There are, it's a headache on Linux to do that, but everywhere else it's fine. Oh, this is from Tari Coolio. So anyways, that is the tutorial. I'm just kidding. That's the tutorial for FS. Now we wanna, suppose we are actually for suppose we are making an app that requires a lot of permissions and you know has to have more power and we want to access arbitrary files now to do that we'll have to use rust and how do you use rust well that's a good question and we're going to be figuring that out there is this tutorial but it's not pretty good it's it's look how long it is for such a simple thing it's actually pretty simple the, you can read more here if you want to you know, get more detail, but to do it right, let's go back into the main.rs file. So I have added another command here because what I found out is that it's, if you, unless you scroll down here, you wouldn't know to make multiple commands or how to use that. So we have our custom command from the template and we have our new file, our new program called, our new command called process file. And it'll take a string called file path. This is not a tutorial on how to code in Rust, by the way. So, you know, if you don't know Rust, that's uh, that's gonna unfortunate for you. But most likely, I have I have made this tutorials for the people who are Rust programmers and also know web dev. So someone like me who is a full stack developer, and so those kinds of people will benefit the most. And those are the kinds of people I like. I want to target basically. I like those people are like me. So, you know, this video is kind of like pe for people like me. Anyways, this one, we need to make it accessible for the front end. So we call invoke handler like usual, but instead of just com custom command, we want to add process file here as well. And then in the front end, we go over here, we want to import something called invoke. And for some reason I cannot find it, but it's in Tauri and we go, oh, Hold on. Okay, I actually put it in my readme. So, you know, you don't even have to, you don't have to, what's that called? Go online anymore. You can just look at my, I put it right in the readme, which is going to be helpful for not only you, but also for me, because something like this is so easy to forget. Front end especially is so easy to forget if you're not coding in React every day. Everything else is pretty easy, but React is something that you can easily forget it. It's kind of like there's a lot of quirks you need to know in React, that's why. But anyways, we are going to call that and we have to invoke. So we call invoke here. And since we are doing something called, what's that called? I don't even know anymore. Don't, don't ask me, I forget. We want to call a command and our command is called process file. So what's kind of unfortunate is that these what's that called? These things that are called invoke, you have to call, you have to use a string and these, these strings aren't defined as constants anywhere at runtime, which is really unfortunate. What would have been really nice is if Tauri had a, suppose you could do this like from Tauri, so import, import commands list from Tauri, that would be really nice to do. And then your commands list would have a dot process file. And then this would be defined over here somewhere, somewhere like this. And then, you know, so that if the string does not exist, it's kind of easy to fix or something. I'm not entirely sure, but how it would work, but we don't really care. And our path now will be the downloads directory. Oh, it's over here. Okay, and we are good to go, we got this. Let's run this and yeah, this should be a short tutorial. The next one is not going to be coming anytime soon, by the way, I am not that efficient anymore uh, when it comes to this stuff or when it comes to business stuff. Oh yeah, here's a quick preview of my the the work I got done in four months. Not much to show, but 
what did we want to do? We wanted to do this, okay? And we wanted to process the file on this side. And I'm not entirely sure how to print the debug. So we got to actually go to return data. So we just want to know if we got something. What do we want? Oh, you know what I totally forgot? I totally forgot how to define the, what's that called? <laughs> the the type of the of the return value the return value type I don't know how I forgot how to do that in Rust but that's what happens when you don't code in Rust for a long time but we want to return file you know what let's just return what do we have to return actually oh that's how you do it okay so we want to return a boolean because why not wait is that a thing Oh, wait a sec. Okay, I don't want to return a boolean. That's a bad idea. But we want to return... See, this is what I hate about Rust. It has stuff like this, but it should have been done implicitly. And they say explicit where you should be explicit, but then they make returns implicit. I actually don't like the fact that a return is implicit because it screws a lot of things up if you ever code in rust and you have scopes basically like these things like if there's an if statement here and you didn't use a curly bracket or whatever like it's really good it gets really confusing when the return has to do like which scope the return is with i made that bug once but it's completely different but let's just use their syntax for now so hello from rust and we want to sh say that dot then message see even their tutorial has too much information you don't actually have to do that so then we just want to confirm that the message equals and every language has issues in javascript there's three equal signs come on man in lua everything starts at one and then not zero and then in python people get angry that there's no there's no curly braces like come on like people will always find a hate something to hate on and that's my other point. I was looking at the Stack Overflow survey, and I found that that even the most popular language or whatever has haters to it, 20%. So what I realized is that it's impossible for everyone to like you. It's not even, it's not possible for even unanimous. Something has to be like extreme to be unanimous, okay? It has to be so such a basic concept to be unanimous. Uh, but everything else, so many subjective things, there will always be haters for it. That is a, that's all I have to say. And what did we want to see? We wanted to see if something is invalid args file path for a thing that process file required, missing required key file path. Oh, so I really, that is, that is a, that is funny. <laughs> if you didn't catch that. I had named my argument. Yeah, I am not going to say anything, but that was too funny. This is what happens when you're, what's that called? Doing stuff. You're making a tutorial. You don't think, and then you make mistakes. But anyways, this is confirmation that the function got called, and it did do stuff. Your prints won't show up because of I don't want to remember, or I can't remember why. But it's basically because it's running and you know what, too much, too much to explain. You can figure it out yourself. There is a something called print. Okay. Console. Okay. But anyways, that's not really important as you can do what I just did. And there you go. Anyways, I'll do a quick overview for what we did. I updated the Tauri config file because I updated Tauri, the dependencies, for both Cargo and NPM. I removed something called Bootloader for Mac OS and something else. I'm not sure where, but basically two lines got removed. It removed an extra comma as well. Then you want to do scope for the scopes you want to access to. And then in your example view, 
or wherever you're going to be calling the file system from, you want to use imports rather than the actual wind underscore window dot underscore underscore tower. You don't want to do that because that's annoying. You'd rather have access to APIs with their documentation. And then I've showed you how to use a write text file or a write binary file, as well as the same goes for reading a file, except there's one less argument. Uh, but you'd still need to do this in dear base directory download. What else did I show? I showed you how to get those directories. You can actually get all of these, like the actual path to them with download directory. And if you want arbitrary, if you want to access arbitrary files, you'll have to use, you'll have to use what's that called? Rust itself. And if you want to open up the Explorer, file explorer on a certain directory, I've shown you that too. You just use that open thing. This also works for URLs. Just read the documentation there. And you could also specify which application to open it with. But anyways, to do Rust, then I actually showed you how to use Rust from JavaScript. So for that, we created a custom command and we did some stuff there. You need to know Rust or at least the basics of it. And then in your invoke handler, it's a list of commands, not just one command. So I showed you how to do that as well. And one last thing is the invoke. So how do we actually invoke it? We call the command's name as well as its arguments, if any. And the argument is argument name, sorry, parameter, okay, and then argument. So don't get them. I know I this is actually a horrible idea. This should be, uh, I'm not going to say it better. Basically, just name your, name your, what's that called? <laughs> I already, I am actually blanking out again. But basically, just name your variables something that makes sense and you'll be good. So I showed you how to invoke that command. Okay, I hope this was enough for the future. Some person said OAuth, which maybe I'll look into. But anyways, that this example, this tutorial showed you how to use the FS API as well as calling Rust directly from the front end. That is very useful for a lot of people that ask for that feature or that tutorial. And here it is. I'm sorry it took so long. But I, like I said, I'm not sure if I said it, but uh, I've been going through some things for the last couple of months. So anyways, I'll see you guys in the next one.